Welcome to Subramani. Uh, why do we invest? Uh, the reason for investing is uh, putting uh, some of, uh, amount of money today uh, so that after some time you can get a amount bigger than that, right? So, whether it is short term investing, whether it is long term investing, you call it value investing. They are all, we invest to get a return which is superior to what uh, the, any other form can give, adjusted for inflation and taxes, right? That is the reason why we invest. So, why do we invest in equities? We get, we invest in equities to get better returns. Same thing, I mean, any investment is to get better returns. And there are two ways how you get better returns when you invest in equities. One is uh, appreciation, uh, the share price going up, largely it is that and second it is the dividends that you get, right. So, especially uh, adapting a, a portfolio for a retirement uh, person uh, is like saying I will convert, I will let us let us use the word pensionize, I need to pensionize my assets, right. So. And that is that is what you need to do when you are retirement when you are retiring. So, how what do you do when you are young and you are trying to build a portfolio? Should you what should you look for? Uh, well, you well everybody tells you, including Warren Buffett, that you should look for uh, dividends, right? Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm sure many of you know, but many of you do not know that Berkshire Hathaway pays no dividend, just doesn't pay dividend. If you want money, you have to go and sell the share, and that is a brilliant way of uh, managing the money saying look I you have 10,000 shares go and sell whenever you want you sell 1 share, 2 share, 10 shares, 100 shares whatever you want you sell uh, and whenever you do not want to sell the appreciation will always be there. This is like opting for the growth option in a mutual fund right. Uh, but when I am talking of dividend I do not want to confuse you with mutual funds here I am talking of equity portfolio and uh, dividend right. What are the advantages of, uh, okay, uh, two ways how a company can compensate you, one is by paying you a nice dividend and second is by doing buybacks. So, when they do buybacks and it is assured that every month or uh, sorry, every year or every quarter if they are doing a buyback, you can be sure that at a particular price there will be somebody buying like for example, if TCS did a last buyback at 4000 rupees per share. You can be sure that next year if they do well, they will they may increase the price to 4100 or 4200. This has two advantages. One, it gives you the base saying, okay, if I buy at this particular price, if I buy it at 3100, uh, very unlikely that I will lose money because I know the company will come out with a buyback in July or December or whenever and they will buy it back at 4100. Forms a very good solid base for the retail shareholder to say, okay, if I have these shares, I can give it for a buyback. So the the downside gets protected because of the buyback. But largely, companies uh, pay you good dividends, and uh, that is like being rewarded for uh, sitting tight doing nothing. So, sitting tight doing nothing, you get rewarded in terms of dividend. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, it is taxable now, but at think for 99 percent of the people, you will still be paying a tax rate less than what uh, the uh, dividend uh, distribution tax was. Uh, forget people who are promoters etc, they would be paying a whooping high uh, rate of tax maybe the 40 percent, 44 percent, 40 percent, 30 percent plus uh, 30 percent surcharge kind of a thing. Uh, but for most of the others, uh, you would perhaps you would be paying at 28 percent, so it is not too bad. But that is the reward for sitting tight. Now, when you are young and you are building a, a portfolio, you should not have to concentrate only on dividend. You should concentrate on dividend, buyback and growth. What does a company do with the money that it gets uh, after tax, right? There is EBITDA, then there is interest, depreciation, tax, after removing all that, uh, there is PAT, PAT. Right. So, what do you, what does a company do with PAT? One, it can plow back into the business. So, when you understand plowing back, it is the power of compounding of the undistributed profits. Let me say this again, the uh, power of compounding of the undistributed profits. So, let us say the company gets 100 rupees as uh, profit after tax. 
30 rupees it ke pays off as dividend it is left with 70 rupees and that 70 rupees gets put into the business right so your 30 rupees which you get you get it and you uh, i am ignoring tax for a minute you take that 30 rupees and reinvest maybe you reinvest in the same company or you reinvest somewhere else right but you reinvest or you spend it if you need if you're a retired person and you need that income you spend it but that 70 rupees gets plowed back into the business and that also compounds you should not think only your 30 rupees is compounding that 70 rupees is also compounding that is a huge advantage so a good company which is compounding that uh, which is using that 70 percent more efficiently uh, definitely is compounding at a better rate than perhaps what you can do right uh, let us assume for a minute that Bharti Airtel is compounding that 70 rupees Reliance is compounding that uh, Zomato is compounding that and uh, Nika or uh, uh, or a Paytm is also compounding that. Remember that they don't may not have profits, but whatever profits they are very unlikely that they will pay out as dividend. They don't have uh, indigo, for example. They need all the money to buy new aircraft, to, uh, right? To expand, open more offices, uh, reach more places, right? So they need. So these are growing companies. So when you're building your portfolio, you need both. You need an NTPC, Coal India. Uh, Gale, uh, IOC, BP, BPCL which will give you very good dividends uh, and you need companies which are growing today let us say for example uh, Zomato and Indigo which will grow after 10 years. So, for next 10 years you may see gut wrenching volatility but you are very unlikely to hold a Zomato or an Indigo for dividend. Right now no but after some time you will find that oh Indigo is part of infrastructure it gives a nice stable 8% uh, return or a 7% return. So, it will become a dividend story at some stage of its life right. So, uh, a Bharti uh, uh, earlier used to just not pay any dividends and it, it has to grow right Vodafone India to, to uh, Vodafone idea. Vodafone idea today will not be able to pay dividends it will have to grow it will have to reinvest. So, you have to look at a company you when you are looking at your own portfolio you look for two three things you look for current dividend. But when you are in your 20s or 30s current dividend should not matter at all in fact it should not you do should not seek it at all simply because uh, they, uh, you do not need that cash flow. However, I still like companies which pay a good dividend if I can get a company with us giving me 4 5 percent dividend yield and a 20 p I think it is a great company to invest and I would say invested pretty long I mean I have invested pretty long uh, in say NTPC and all uh, I have bought I have sold but the dividends never hurt me and it is available at a low p right. Uh, just a caveat every share that I have mentioned I have looked at it I, I have a position which is uh, plus or I have said I do not understand it so I have not invested. So, all these shares you can assume that I know these companies some I would be invest some I would not invest and even if I have invested today by the time you watch the video I may have sold. So, do not get into do not believe that these are tips these are not tips. So, uh, I, I also realize that in your own mind building a position sizing also takes a lot of time uh, like for example, a mutual fund cannot build a 12,000 crore 13,000 crore kind of a, a Bharti uh, Airtel in their portfolio or even state bank of India in their portfolio uh, it takes time right it takes a month it takes two months and to sell it might take six months right. So, building positions and all you do it very conservatively sorry I have uh, I have digressed but largely you look for a company which pays a dividend and it plows back. Now, take a company like uh, Berkshire Hathaway it does not pay any dividend ever it just keeps reinvesting whenever it has money it reinvests or it sits on cash. Sometimes when it is sitting on cash and it has nothing no nothing to uh, invest in or does not know how to deploy it does a buyback also. So, you should look for two three things you should look for companies which are growing at a good pace they will not be able to pay you dividend in 2022 they will be able to pay you in 2032. So, if you are now 50 years of age that is a good thing because uh, they will start paying dividends at 60 and anyway you do not need dividends till 60 I am assuming for a minute that 60 is your retirement age. So, you should look for some companies which are and if you are 60 you should look for some companies which are paying you dividend now because you want to live off it and some which will pay after 10 15 years because you will be 75 80 at that time and that time those will become good dividend yield shares. So, companies will move from the uh, very heavy investing uh, stage to the nice dividend payout stage 
second advantage is when you are looking at dividend you do not need to uh, look at the uh, day to day price fluctuation that is another huge advantage and you don't have to bother what the market pe is what is happening and this gut wrenching uh, volatility will not bother you for example uh, i mean international example would be johnson and johnson obviously johnson johnson share has also done all this uh, ups and downs not very high but it has done its ups and downs but it has consistently paid dividend for the last 70 80 years whatever so what happens is people who have invested just are looking for good dividend so you when you are building a portfolio you build some which will be investing all the money and growing some which will be paying dividend and growing and some which does not know what to do with the money so will be paying a higher uh, payout so uh, the uh, mnc group in india like the hul and uh, uh, colgate nestle we try to paint them all with the same brush not true uh, colgate is not growing as aggressively as nestle uh colgate and nestle may not be growing as aggressively as hul so also remember that these companies if they are not growing uh they have cash so what will they do they will give it back to you so therefore you have a higher dividend payout or a buyback so buyback is very unlikely in many of these mncs so i'm not saying that they won't so buyback is unlikely so the dividend payout will be high so those are good shares to hold for your dividend but 10 years later or 5 years later because at current prices it will none of these shares are a dividend yield stock right but they will become dividend yield stock at your cost after 10 years it's like uh, doing a growth investing you put money today because 10 years later it will the dividend will start looking attractive because the share price would have moved up but you don't have to worry about the share price because you are dependent on the dividend now this is a nice way to build a portfolio for a retiree So if you're young, you're 32, you still build your portfolio. Don't look at dividend payout. See the compounding of the money that is there. A company with a good uh, return on capital (ROCE) and ROW should not give me uh, dividends. I don't want dividends from companies which have a good ROCE or good ROW. I want them to reinvest that. the fact that they are paying a high dividend while getting a good roc and rnw makes me upset that oh they don't seem to have any growth plan right so uh, some should be looking at growth uh, 10 years later some portfolio should be paying current dividend so depending on your age if you are 22 you need companies which are compounding more if you are 62 you need comp- companies which are paying out dividend because you are going to use it for your day to day expenses i think one of the best ways to build a, a portfolio for retirement is to look at dividend growth but don't ignore the compounding of the retained earnings right that is also important so don't say oh i should only look at this no if you are 50 you should look at a combination of current dividend and uh, future dividend right in fact you can ignore current dividend because you are anyway salaried right so if your salary don't bother too much about current dividend uh, but <clears throat> when your salary stops the dividend should be greater than your expenses i think one important criteria which i used for my retirement in 1999 uh was uh, saying is my dividend enough to take care of my household expenses the day i could say yes to that uh i uh, i just quit right so i have so the other advantage of uh, having a dividend portfolio is you are you are not touching your uh, capital for a very long period of time so at say 70 years of age or at 75 years of age you need to withdraw from your capital it should not unnerve you because your capital would have uh, run dramatically well if you have not touched it from the year age of 60 to your age of 75 right so 15 years let us assume it has doubled twice uh you uh, you've done just fabulously well right so and your dividends will also grow uh, because dividends normally grow at a rate faster than inflation this is how you build a portfolio whether you are young or whether you are uh, at retirement thank you